gets you through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Mm. Oh, this is the week that was, and it was a tricky week. Yep. There was a lot of happening. Yeah. The week that was through the lovely eyes of Jody Oddy. It's Jody's Diary. Diary. Well, you know what, guys? I work with an award winner. The Brenner Award Best in Town on Air Radio Metro is Hazy! <laughs> and the gong for the best new cucumber goes to. You're a newbie in this space. Mm. No, I think in terms of commercial radio, I guess, relative newcomer. Yes. Newcomer? Newcomer. <laughs> That's oh, like a newcomer and a cucumber. I felt like a cucumber the next morning. And what I have learnt this week about going on a road trip with your workmate, don't let him invite himself to your room to have beers with your husband. I am not kidding. I'm standing in the bathroom, which was open, by the way. Didn't yeah. have a door. Yeah, that was confronting. Didn't have a door, <laughs> and I am trying to put tape on my nipples because you have to tape your nipples down when you're wearing a dress. Now, that was the most confronting thing that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I repeat, never, ever, ever let him into your room. My marriage nearly ended because you needed to do a poo. There it is. No. Front page. That is outrageous. outrageous. How many times is my pooing habits going to get other people in trouble? Okay, I'll so... I'll tell you what. So, so. Let me context. <laughs> okay, let me context. Okay. We, on the weekend, went... Oh, Sorry. my God. <laughs> Exclusive audio. And some advice to live by. That's oh, it. A massive rule, and it is if your bum is open, your mouth should be closed. <laughs> yes. Hazy became the face of Caruso's constipation. These help to relieve constipation by making it easier for you to poo. So if you're struggling to poo and would like to poo more, why not try Caruso's Constipation Ease? What have you done? What have you done? Thought, thoughts on that? Can you explain that? What did you, what did you just say? No, I'm just saying you sitting on a toilet trying to do a poo. Yeah. What? Because I'm... <laughs> We dove headfirst into Wednesday. A Kieran Dove, Mitchum and Impulse are all brands of what? Isn't it Dove? <laughs> it was Dove. Or I say Dove. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Kieran, sorry to confuse there. Dove, not Dove. Like you dove into a pool. <laughs> As my attention span completely buggered off. Pure tap. A school scored themselves 500 bucks. Pure Taps, that wall weighs too, by the way. They're doing it for our kids. You can help by filling a reusable water bottle with Pure Tap. PureTap.com.au will bring the supernovas. Kickstart the kids. Scene still be there. Yeah. Beautiful little morning. Tell us where to go via the Nova player. And also, as a little kicker, you get 500 bucks for your school. Yes. Thanks to Channel 7 and Pure Tap. Thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. Appreciate it. Did you already say that? Yes. Oh! <laughs> Christ, what day is it? A big St Kilda this Friday night. Is that tonight? It's night. No, Friday night. Oh, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> can we just meet in the middle? So one time can we meet in the middle? You're either a day ahead or a day behind. In a completely judgmental way, we spoke about people who people think are completely hot when they're really not. Like old thumb face Channing. I don't get Channing Tatum. Oh. Get out! <laughs> Sorry, have you seen Magic Mike? Yeah, and doesn't do it for me. Too built, I think. Too built. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He's too well put together. Yeah. Is that what he's yeah. too chiseled? And his face is... There's no such thing, Andrew. No, there oh, definitely yeah. is such a thing. And his face is slightly funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's got a built face. There was a heartfelt tribute to Hooper Stank. The lyrics of this song are depicting someone who wants to tell the loved one that he is the reason for change because they were arrogant in the relationship. They may have had an affair and eventually it ended because of his behaviour. But it changed him irrevocably forever. Wow. Mm. So you're doing milkshake by police. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's this. And as always, let's finish with some off-air gear. He's been in some of the... Oh, f- He's been in some of the biggest international TV shows like Game of Thrones. Some of the... F- some of the highest-grossing films like the... Oh. 
So to all the cucumbers. Newcumber. 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 <laughs> and everyone who's backed up. So if you're struggling to poo and would like to poo more, why not try it? Go off this weekend, kings and queens, whatever day it is. All my love, Jody. <laughs> Leaving a company or a job or anything in particular, it, it can be awkward. It can. And it can be awkward when it's someone that you think in your head, Jesus Christ, how did you even survive this long? Yeah. Because you're really bad at your job. Can't wait to see the back of you. And also, you're a bit of a D-head. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> mm. D-head. I don't even know what that means, but I assume it's not good. No. Mm. A UK woman who sued her former employer over not receiving a leaving card has lost her employment claim <laughs> after it was revealed the card was hidden from her when only three people had signed it. Oh, and then, and then she sued them. And that, my darling girl, is the reason why everyone's pleased to see the back of you. Yes. <laughs> Coincidentally, her name is Karen O'Connor. Oh, no! she, <laughs> she brought 40 complaints to a tribunal and claimed that she, the lack of leaving card was a, a failure to acknowledge the, her existence. And then their response basically was, well, we hid it from her because we thought that would be even more derogatory yeah. that such little people interacted with the card. Yeah, that's sad, isn't it? Three, yeah. oh, how many, does it say how many people in the whole entire company? Is it like a car? 10,000. <laughs> 300. She works at Google. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. That is pretty brutal, do you isn't know, it? Do you know the other thing as well is that when you leave some of those big, stupid farewell cards? Yeah. Oh, producer Flack, you've got us some thoughts on this. I've had seven over my whole career. Stop getting fired, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard. Um, and I've burnt every one of them. Really? really? They're just that they're a waste of money. I don't like them. And also, you, you have a look through them, and it's like, oh, Bob in finance signed it. Oh, great to work with you. Bob, I spoke to you once in three yeah, years. Why did you sign my card? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's the worst. Because then and when the card's going around, and everyone's sort of there, and they go, hey, uh, blah, blah's leaving. Here you go. Do you want to write a message? I'm like, no. <laughs> no I'm stuck writing, hey, Huh. Good luck yeah. from Andrew. Well, also, if it's a really good friend that you really like and you value them, I'm sending a text message. Yeah. I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm so sad to see you go, blah, 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 blah. I'm not writing it in a public forum in front of everybody. That's weird. Yeah, and do the right thing. Mm. When, when I leave places, give me beer. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah so Give me true. a case of beer. I, I've, got, I've got some real thoughts on what I'll write in your card when you go. You ready? Do you want me to relay them to you? Yeah, or do you want me to read it? Do you, you, you write it down, I'll read it. <laughs> right, I'm writing it. I'm writing it. What does my message Dear say to you? Dear Hazy, I will miss your the presence of your calves. All the best. Go f*** yourself. <laughs> TV shows like Game of Thrones. She's your sister and you left her to die. Some of the highest grossing films like the Avatar sequel. Probably we're smarter than that. Not as smarter than me. Hey, I'm the one with the harpoon. But we know him more for being Tom in Love My Way. If you still feel like this on your birthday in three months, then I'll help you. Ahead of his new show, Plum, premiering this Sunday at 8.30 on ABC. Please welcome Brendan Cow. Casey, please say a very good morning to our super special guest, Brendan Cow. Hey. Morning. Hey, guys. How are you going? Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, please tell us about uh, Peter the Plum Lum living the dream until he's not in this incredible new show. Yeah, well, that pretty much sums it up. Um, I, I wanted to explore post-career for athletes, you know, what happens to them. And because I've read a lot about how they can become very depressed, the lack of identity, what happens with their body. And Peter the Plum Lum works at the airport. He was a footy hero, kind of Paul Gallen, kind of Greg yep. Bird kind of guy. And he's got a uh, a girlfriend and a son who loves his beers with the boys and training. And and then one one day at work, he has an epileptic fit. He has a seizure on the on the on the tarmac as a result of the concussions he took on the field because he was one of the toughest to ever play. And suddenly he's faced with a bit of a situation, which is you know do something about it. Very hard when. You've never been scared of anything and your own, the way you solve things is through running through a brick wall. So 
that's kind of where we lay our scene. It's an interesting situation, mate. I, like I know, and even from an AFL perspective, it, it's the same thing. And I didn't play at the top level, but it used to be a badge of honour. If you could get through a concussion test, come out the other side and still be dizzy right. and not know where you were, but play, you were a hero. And now, and I've had to do it. I'm, I'm 40 years old now, and I've had to sit down and be like, geez, man, how many concussions did I cop? But how many concussions do you think you had when you played? I had three really bad ones. Yeah. But I had, I reckon, maybe a dozen of the micro <gasps> ones, which were where you'd get knocked and phased, and you knew that by the time you got to the bench, you'd be fine. So you'd push through it for a good 30 seconds. Who knows what's going to happen? No, right? that's it's, amazing, it's man. The, the thing that they're becoming more concerned with is those repeated concussions, isn't it? When you, you have been concussed and you come back out, leaving yourself vulnerable to be concussed twice, you know, a direct avenue towards CTE. Of course, you can't diagnose CTE till posthumously because you can't go ferreting around in the brain. But there is TES, which is traumatic encephalopathy syndrome, where ex-players, even soldiers and sound people and boxers might show symptoms of, you know, bouts of rage, um, forgetfulness, insomnia, mood swings. So it's a really, really intrusive and bewildering disease. And um, what I'm more interested in as a dramatist is what happens to a male in that situation. How does he talk to his girlfriend? How does he talk to his son? And this is about communicating. Yeah. See, and that's that's another element. And that's yeah. something that, sorry for taking over, but that's that's something no. I'm learning as well. And that is communication, talking Great. about how you're feeling, and not just emotional, but now mm. physical. It's a massive generational shift now. Yeah, well, let's hope so. I mean, you get the feeling that, you know, with the millennial dads being more present and guys going, you know, there's a lot of podcasts and people out there going, no, no, let's wrap this up. Let's not just drink it down, push it mm. down. But where behaviour becomes toxic is when you deny how you're really feeling and it inevitably spurts out. And he he's not only doesn't have the skills to communicate, he's been told that it's wrong Yeah. because he thinks, I don't want to impose myself. I don't want to have to bloody be a burden. And the new idea of bravery that I'm trying to present in the male world is maybe putting your hand up and saying I'm stressed, confused and afraid is bravery, yeah. more so than going back and out, back out on the field with a broken jaw and putting it back in your mouth jar. Yeah, ma- that's mouth jar, absolutely you know? incredible. And I can see what's happening here. There's a there's a budding bromance between the two of you because you're bonding already <laughs> and, and now it's going to get even firmer because because I'm going to tell you, Brendan, that he loves NRL as much as you do. And I think you're a big Cronulla Sharks fan, aren't you? Yeah, well, that I mean, that was kind of also probably the secret I'm trying to keep is that I made this show so I could finally live my fantasy of being a Sharks champion. <laughs> <laughs> The only way it was ever going to happen was through fiction. Um, just before I let you go, I have to ask you about Love My Way, which is one of the best series that has ever been made in this country. There's no question about that. And you know when you have a scene from a show that sticks with you forever that creates trauma? When when the little girl dies in the park, when she's running through the park in Love Spoiler. My Way. Spoiler! Sorry! <laughs> oh, mate, it's about 20 years. You just said it's 20 years old. Um, but that has... That was it. Oh. You, just had, you just had half, uh, half of the town about to go, I might watch that tonight. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh, everyone was just about to buy the DVD oh, box set. I'm sorry, I've just cost you some royalties now. Um, but that that is just the most powerful television I've ever watched. And if anyone hasn't watched this series, you need to. And you were great in it. It well. was. It was until Sunday night, I think. Yeah. Well, yes, yes. Now, your new show has come along and usurped Love My Way. Well done. Well, you know, the smart thing that I did, I got the producer from Love My Way, the writer from Love My Way, a couple of the actors from Love My Way, and I thought... <laughs> Not unlike a footy team, if you put a couple of those champions around you who can deliver that stuff, then we might be all right. We could absolutely talk to you all day, but now I'm going to sit back and watch Hazy go, no, you hang up, and then Brendan go, no, you no, no, you hang up first. <laughs> oh, finally. It's good to uh, talk some sort of NRL with someone who appreciates it. <laughs> I know. We're in South Australia. We don't get much NRL I've done here, Brendan. That's all right, mate. Well, ju- jump in on, on Sunday night. It's Love My Way uh, meets the Cronulla Shark. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Brendan Cow, what a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for your um, generosity with your time and it's so lovely to chat with you. You're welcome on our show any single time. Thank you, mate. We appreciate you. Thanks very much. No, good on you, mate. Your father, he's on the naughty list. Jody and Hazy's naughty at 640. Naughty, naughty. Yeah, a bit looser this yep. time of morning. Yep. We can get away with some stuff before we've got to straighten up after 7 o'clock. This is where we all pucker up and let's go. Mm. Let's talk underwear use or not use of. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Okay, this will make sense when I say it. Delta Airlines recently released a two-page memo detailing appearance 
requirements for future employees, which stipulates that flight attendants must wear underwear. <laughs> Why are you booing? Why are you guys booing? Oh, come on, guys. Um, well, Straighten um, up. Is that like a no-brainer? Oh, it probably is. Those t- th- I, can I say, those skirts are tight. Yeah, but that's a thing. The memo is split into four sections covering grooming hair and what jewellery is acceptable and clothing. More specifically, it states that proper undergarments must be worn by interviewees and current flight attendants must not be visible. So, uh, is it, we're talking, is it a Sharon Stone sliver moment that they're trying to avoid or what's going on? I'm confused as to how they know that people aren't wearing them. That's the thing. No, but you can, this is, can I go back to my original point, please? Sure. Those skirts are so tight that you can see whether they are or if they're not. So, if you're wearing a G string, you'll see the outline. If you're wearing full briefs, you'll see the outline. If you're not wearing any underwear, then you won't see anything at all. So either way, those flight attendants can't win because yeah, we will be able lose. to tell if she, if she's Nicholas or if she's not Nicholas. What if she's wearing like a pair of um, like old school red and stimpy satin boxer shorts? <laughs> so true. That's also distracting because. Because, you know, can I ask, who wears them these days? No, can I ask a question? <laughs> you would have had a pair of them. <laughs> yeah, you, absolutely you would, I did. You would have ne- this is why you went home alone at 3am every single time, because no one is having sex with you when you're wearing red and stiff yeah, boxer they shorts. Did, they didn't even know I was wearing it. I know, but that's... So if I'd got someone home and then they saw it, they still would have left. Yeah, but you <laughs> were enough of a douche for people to go, he'd be wearing red and stiffy mm. underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Stippy, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Guess what's happening this weekend? I'm so excited. I'm going with my sisters in law to Cheese Fest. Oh, Cheese Fest. One of the great festivals. Well, Cheese Fest. And what about this? There is a Nova Toasty bar at Cheese Fest 2024. You've got a toasty. I've got a toasty. I've got my toasty. <laughs> I think the booze were for me, by the way. Oh, okay. Do you want to hear what's in mine? Yes, please. Woodside Cheese writes semi hard cow. What? S- sorry? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. It's before seven o'clock. And I'll tell you what. You get an insight now into what uh, Jody eats away from work. <laughs> Why not completely hard? That's the question. Why semi hard? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, continue. What else? What other delicacies are in yours? Uh, dear, there's ham, yep. there's spring gully, uh, a loat corn relish as well, and there's pineapple all on Scala sourdough bread. That actually sounds quite delicious. Doesn't it well, sound Apart from good. the semi hard cow. <laughs> well, again, the, <laughs> the cow obviously wasn't excited about my toasting. <laughs> yeah, wow. <Yeah, well, laughs> he was like, he was like yeah, it's okay. <laughs> It's all right, but it's, I'm not 100% there. All good. Uh, in, in my toasty, we've got Go Woodside Cheese Wright's Cheddar. Yes. Delicious. Mortadella. Ooh. That's fantastic. Yep. Um, a semi-hard pickle. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 fully, fully, fully hard pickle. <laughs> Mayonnaise with baked bean dipping sauce all on Scala sourdough. Oh, my God. Talk us through the baked bean dipping sauce, please. Good, I just like baked beans. I like baked beans in a toasty as much as you like a semi-hard with, cow. I like baked beans as much as the next bloke. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure I like baked beans and pickles. Well, I'll tell you what. The baked beans and the pickles could be the difference between um, your semi-hard cow... <laughs> Being from where it's at to taking the next step, if you know what I mean. We need to say huge thanks to Scarlet and Spring Gully for providing all our ingredients too. Australia's original and biggest cheese festival is back, baby, this Saturday and Sunday in Rundle Park. Get your tickets from cheesefest.com.au. And what we will say is that Mm. no cows or cattle were harmed whilst we made this break. (laughs) And they weren't even that excited, if you know what I mean. They were half excited. Liam Payne, my goodness, it has shocked the world, this news, has Mm. it not? Oh, it's just one of those things. We mentioned it yesterday, and some of these big-time celebrities Mm. that you know exactly what you were doing when you heard the news, Yeah, you can probably put into that. You can put that category for me. Yeah. He was definitely troubled. All these photos have emerged now from the hotel room, producer Zoe. What do we got? Yeah, it's un- it is just incredibly sad. Unfortunately, every new bit of information that comes out just makes the whole thing a whole lot worse. It's really awful. Um, a 911 call from Argentina has been uh, not released, but they've released the transcript of what was said. And uh, part of that was we have a guest who is overwhelmed with drugs and alcohol. He's breaking things. He's tearing the room apart. We need someone to be sent to us urgently. We don't know if his life is at risk. Mm. Incredibly, incredibly sad. Um, so clearly 
he was, yeah, not in a good way, obviously, before it happened. So you see these photos and it's like littered with foil and yes. white powder and whiskey and all sorts. Yes, and apparently, I, I'm not sure, this is unfortunately the trouble of the time we live in, what's real and what's fake. There's yeah. lots of photos that are coming out and yeah. who knows what's real, but it looks like the room was completely trashed. Um, Tem- yeah, uh, yeah, broken TV. T- yeah, like smashed and everything. TMZ have come under fire oh, because I disgraceful. could not believe that they actually published photos of his body yeah, on the ground. It was, so uh, not full photos, but like his arm and his torso just to prove that, like the tattoos. Yes, genuinely like, disgraceful. Yeah. Um, really awful for his family who have made a statement now. Um, so they've hopped online um, and thanked everyone for their support. They've said, we are heartbroken. Liam will forever live in our hearts. We'll remember him for his kind, funny and brave soul. We're supporting each other the best we can as a family and ask for privacy and space at this awful time. Uh, the One Direction, One Direction boys have also made a joint statement saying that in the coming days they will make their own statements, but yeah. for now they're supporting each other. Yeah. Okay, Unbelievable situation. So mm. Ant Middleton um, did a podcast with him, or actually a doco. Mm. Documentary, mm. it's called Straight Talking. Mm. Um, and it's, it emerged yesterday, a lot of people, they're actually, they're quite, they were quite close friends. Yeah, yeah. didn't um, realise. Yeah, so this particular documentary, they he travels with celebrities. They went to Namibia and uh, there's a, a bunch of stuff in this documentary that was yep. probably alarm uh, signs mm. back then for what potentially could have happened, but yeah. it gave you a good insight into probably the stresses of being a big time celebrity. Um, firstly, this is Liam Payne talking to Ant Middleton on drinking. I'd have a couple of drinks to get myself in the mood. I think it made you confident, made you relaxed a little bit more into it. But then for me, it would just always go a bit too far and a bit too far. And I think because adrenaline pushes you through, you don't realise how drunk you're getting. And then after the adrenaline wears off, it's like, whoa, I am waved right now. And then before you know it, you're the dickhead at the party. It's not, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's sad. And there was reports of that, unfortunately, as well, earlier this month at Niall's gig, which is what he was in Argentina for, yeah. um, that he was getting really um, out of control drunk with uh, fans and posting and being quite loud and obnoxious in that space. Yeah. Um, he copped a lot of criticism online. He spoke as well about mental health. There's times where that level of loneliness and people getting into every day, like I say, just every so often you're like, when will this end? You know, and then so, like, that's almost nearly killed me a couple of times. As when in I've been in a bad place. To... Yeah, when I've been in a bad place. 100%, yeah. you know, there's no point denying it. It's definitely been on the menu a couple of times in my life. That's heartbreaking to hear now. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, straight away in a situation like that and uh, everyone knows someone who has got themselves into such a state where they mm. feel like that's the only option. Yeah. And then as soon as you hear that and you hear something like that, you're like, well, the warning signs were there. Mm. Was there something that someone could have done? Hindsight's a beautiful thing, but it's yeah. just a sad situation. Yeah. I think it's and really- also, there are a heap of people around him that are going, what could I have done? Mm. And the answer is probably nothing. Mm. Really. Yeah. I, I always wonder about this as well. He spoke about being so famous at such a young age and the pressures that other people don't know that these young people go through. How did you cope with all that fame from such a young age? Honestly, I don't think you do. I think it's a little bit of a crash course and that's why we have so many accidents with people today. You know, people say, no, oh, you've got to be thick-skinned to be famous. Like, it's all right saying that, but for what about these people who don't know what they're getting into and it really these reality shows and the more that, like, newspapers and different things are allowed to just poke at people slowly but surely, it's like death by a thousand cuts for some people. See, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, because everyone fun. thinks that celebrities are invincible. I know. And the it's boys, part of the job. The boys were, what, 15 when they got put into One yeah. Direction? They oh, were babies. babies. Yeah. Doing this job, I've seen so many people sign up for um, reality shows and I just, I know it's going to unfold mm. and it's heartbreaking and it's awful because the feedback from the public is brutal mm. and if you're not prepared for that, it's absolutely crushing. Mm. So, And help is available, by the way, um, for anyone that might be struggling at the moment because uh, apart from anything, obviously none of us personally know Liam, but it's an incredibly upsetting situation. Um, the number for Lifeline is 13 11 14. There you go. Um, what a tough situation, and particularly for One Direction fans. Just lastly, and I spoke to a lot of people there. So you were right in the sweet spot. Mm. But then I went to Channel 7, and there was a couple of younger girls mm. there who were like, yeah, they were devastated, and they yeah. cried that morning. Yeah. Um, so One Direction, and particularly that sweet spot of young girls, 12 to sort of 15, I reckon. Yeah, it's heartbreaking it's a big part. Yeah. Oh, our boss, Katie, yesterday came up to me and genuinely asked me if I was all right. And I went, thank, <laughs> thank you, yeah. Katie, I am all right. But it is just truly devastating yeah. news. Oh, I mean, 
the tension, the anxiety that comes with Battle of the Bangers totally. is just, it's ever so consuming sometimes. <laughs> and so much so that just, you can't even stop so sneezing. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, so. Oh, God. Again. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. We're out now. Is that yourself? Yep. Is that why people should vote for your song? No. Because you're sick? <laughs> no. So the topic this week was 2004. Yeah. Given we were born. Mm. 20th birthday last night. And so, what we did discover as well through all of this is that 2004 was an unbelievable year for music. Yeah, it was. How oh, good. So many incredible tunes. So, what I did take umbrage to was last night. Excuse me. In a room full of people who were just adoring you. Excuse me very much. And you took that opportunity to take advantage and play your song. Not just play your song, but I sing just... it live in front of everybody. Okay, can I just say, can I just say, I thought that I'd try and attempt to take the party to the next level. Yep. And just inject a bit of extra life. Yeah. And I thought, what injects life better than grabbing the mic and singing Shannon Noll, What About Me? Well, he gets to his feet and says, What about me? Oh, they love it too. <laughs> But you just take more than you give. Yeah, that's I what see it's all what's about, happening here. That's what it's all about. You saw a mic, you saw a crowd, saw an and you thought, I am going to garner some votes here. Oh, well, guess what's going to happen? That is outside the rules. I'm going to take it to Ibobski. No, what the hell is Ibobski? The International Battle of the Bang Bangers <laughs> Committee. That I is... Bob I Bobski. That is not a thing. Is. That is not a thing. It is now. And I feel like if it was a thing, they would absolutely applaud my hustle. Well, I think that if you had played my song live last night, it would have, oh my God, the votes would have gone through the roof. I'm not sure that you know the words. Hooperstank, the reason. Okay. I just want you to know I found you in the end. I'll give you that. It's a really good tune. Change who I used to be. But then also, I mean, come on, you got this. What about me? It isn't fair. It's Shannon Knoll, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm trailing 19 to 15. Boy, oh boy, I need this. Get your votes in at Jodie and Hayes on Instagram. From what I'm hearing, it's really tight. Is it tight? I think it's still tight. It's still tight. Flat. Juice the flat. Yeah. Jump on. Okay. You're free to jump on the mic. Walk one metre to your right. Thank you. I need time while I look up the Instagram. Okay. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, this is good, isn't it? The reason Hoobers thing versus what about me? 52% to 48% currently, so keep voting. Which way, though? Jodie's way. Oh, Ooh. no, I'm doing this now. Uh, want to have a little cry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. Well, I am sad. If I lose this, I'll be really, really sad. It's a good song. Just do the right thing here. At Jody and Hazy, get your votes in. Yesterday was just a strange day. We were on air when the news came through about Liam Payne's passing. And yeah. it just got you thinking and asking so many unbelievable questions. Yeah, just incredible scenes over there in Argentina. And Joel Dry from Channel 7, um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. What's the latest? Good morning, guys. Yeah, well, I guess we've shifted from the initial shock uh, of the announcement and news of Liam's death to starting to ask questions about how it happened, what occurred. And we are getting more and more answers as the hours go on. Argentinian authorities have released uh, some autopsy results. They are uh, not surprising. He suffered 25 major injuries, the most serious, the head injury that ultimately caused his death. And that can be expected. We know that he fell from the third floor uh, of his hotel, but what we don't yet have is the toxicology details. That will give some insight into whether or not substances were at play, but we have uh, had it confirmed that drugs and alcohol were found inside that Buenos Aires hotel room, a hotel room that was uh, completely trashed. There was broken TVs, smashed up furniture. It was a mess. So that tells us that it was, you know, quite distressing and chaotic, the final moments of Liam. But when we find out more about whether or not there were substances, was he conscious or unconscious at the time of death, that answer sort of takes you down one of two paths. Was it a suicide or was this just a really tragic accident? However it has occurred, we are seeing the outpouring of emotion and grief from fans right across the world from Buenos Aires, where the hotel is, to London, where uh, we've been speaking people to people today. But 
We have just in the last few minutes uh, seen an official statement from One Direction, his former band members. We've been waiting to see whether they would talk individually or as a group. It has been a collective statement. I can read it for you. It says, we're completely devastated by the news of Liam's passing. In time and when everyone is able to, there will be more to say. But for now, we will take some time to grieve and process the loss of our brother, who we loved dearly. The memories we shared with him will be treasured forever. For now, our thoughts are with his family, his friends and the fans who loved him alongside us. We will miss him terribly. We love you, Liam, from Lewis, Zane, Niall and Harry. So you can really get a sense of the emotion those band members must be feeling and that is shared by the, the millions of fans right around the world. Joel, what's the feeling from people on the ground? Obviously, he's been troubled. Obviously, in the lead-up, there were drugs and alcohol. There were um, discrepancies over what's happened with his ex-girlfriends. He was completely vilified on social media. But what's the feeling on the ground amongst One Direction fans? Yeah, well, he's a much-loved member of, of that band. You know, he'll forever be one of the, the biggest ever boy bands to ever exist. So for the fans, they're devastated. They're, they've, they've lost uh, an original member, and for them, it, it's hitting really hard. But as you said, there are tragic circumstances, not just in his death, but in the years um, leading up to this. The years since the band broke up have been difficult for him. He, he branched out in a solo career that perhaps didn't have the same success that other members, nor certainly the, the, the band had. And there was a, a well-publicised battle with drugs and alcohol, a battle that he, he did say he, he was getting on top of. We said he'd been uh, alcohol-free for some time. But as you mentioned, there was in recent days an apparent separation from his girlfriend. They posted on Instagram just a few days ago from a hotel that they were happy, but then she has returned to the US in, in trying circumstances. And perhaps that has it's been what has caused him to spiral and maybe go back to some of those old demons, the drugs and alcohol. That will be something that will be answered in time with more test results. But however it has occurred, it's obviously been uh, a really sad event and, and one that is being felt by so many people, most acutely, of course, his family. They also released a statement saying they are heartbroken by this news and they have the very difficult task now of heading over to Argentina yeah. to collect their boy and ultimately bring him back here to the UK. Just an unbelievable situation. Joel Dry from Channel 7, thank you so much for your time, mate. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Also, good Adelaide boy. Oh, Are you coming you home go. anytime soon? Well, not tonight. I've got some <laughs> more work to do and, and not, not, not in the next few months. But one day, I've just got to convince my wife to... Yeah. Um, to, to join me, to join me on the pilgrimage back home. Oh, That'd stuff, be nice. Um, <laughs> take care, Joel. All the best. Good on you guys. See you. There we go. How do we even deal with this? So the AFL has sanctioned 13 current and former GWS players in the wake of the Giants' postseason function, with the league describing their behaviour as completely unacceptable. And if you're not convinced it was unacceptable, this is what they did. So the Giants adopted a theme of controversial couples for their function. <laughs> They're end of season that finished in not winning a premiership. So in a media statement, the AFL said some of the skits were completely unacceptable and totally at odds with the code's values. The AFL said Faye, your mate Faye. Josh Faye. Yep. Uh, dressed as a former NRL player, reportedly Jared Hayne, and simulated inappropriate acts on a sex doll. McMull McMullen and Hamilton simulated the September 11 terrorist attack on the World Trade Centre, according to the AFL. They were given two-week bans. Wow. Just wow. Mm. I mean, call me, call me old-fashioned, but my goodness, these guys get more behaviour, moral training than anyone in the universe. Like, as AFL players, they are role models, like it or not, but they get taught how to behave like acceptable humans, and this is disgusting. Yeah, I can't sit here and, and say that I haven't done some dumb stuff, like back in the day. And yeah. obviously, you would hope in a situation like this that the boys very much learn, but the education, everything that goes into it, there's it, that's that's the big question mark. And I know it was a, a, a closed environment where no one else was supposed to see, but I just would have thought that Today, even versus ten years ago, you just you just wouldn't do it. But Jared all, Hayne, yeah. Jared Hayne, oh, for goodness' sake! I mean, we're talking sexual assault against women. How is this funny? How is this appropriate to dress up 
and mock something that has ruined women's lives. Mm. Like, oh, it makes me very, very, very angry. Yeah, very much wasn't good. Okay, so 13 current and former GWS players were sanctioned, so there was fines and suspensions. Here's what the CEO of the AFL, Andrew Dillon, had to say. Disbelief, disappointment, our clubs celebrate and commiserate their end of their seasons and they do it in, in good spirit most of the time and it's uh, some terrible choices that were made. It brings the, the topic up as well and it, it's ongoing each and every year as soon as someone stuffs up Mad Monday or Wacky Wednesday. We probably just rule it out. Not just sure there's much but, of a place uh, for it unless you can genuinely trust that the boys, and I, I would feel like you could trust... 99% that just go somewhere, have a few beers and... It's not even 99%. You've got 13 players who've been fined and sanctioned. That's... Uh, it blows my mind that in this day and age, this is still happening. Mm. For goodness sake. And it is, unfortunately. So there you go. Um, importantly as well for Crow supporters, Isaac Cumming and uh, Josh Peatling yep. weren't involved. They've been completely cleared. Yeah. So the start to their Crows careers won't be interrupted. Yeah, but Toby Green disappoints me mm. because he's an icon in the AFL and people look up to him and he obviously sat there and watched this unfold and did nothing. Mm. So that is the latest on the GWS situation. It's Friday. Adelaide's Jody and Hazy. Nineteen minutes to nine o'clock. Nine o'clock's when we play the second storm. Bob's birthday birthday. Yeah, yeah we do. A thousand bucks up for grabs just for having a birthday. We're slightly in recovery mode, I think it's fair to say. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, Thursday night parties. That'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. Do you know what we'll do? It usually calms you down for the weekend. True. Because you're like, maybe I'll use the next couple of days to recover. But then you have a Sunday session <laughs> and then you ruin yourself on Monday. Is this your life? It's a dirty, dirty cycle. Yeah. Nova's 20th birthday was on last night at the district. We had such a good time. Yeah, we loved so catching fun. up with some old Nova 919 alumni as well. Yep. Including our boy Fitzy, who knows how to work a crowd. Jules Stiller and Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald. Yeah. Hello. Hello, everyone. It, it, there's a lot of familiar faces here, and it's great to see you got day released from the Atlas, so thank <laughs> you for coming <laughs> here tonight. That's how you do it. <laughs> That's Very how you nice. project yourself in a crowd. Very the nice. man knows how to read a yeah, crowd. Yeah, he does. He does. I was also a lot of fun catching up with Hayley Pearson, Shane yep. Lowe. Ben Liam and Bell were there as well. Yep. I did enjoy this from Liam. More outrageous story that he told. So we did this thing more reverse streaking. We went down to the nude beach and they were playing nude cricket. But one of the guys tackled me from behind <laughs> and he like sort of grabbed me and was sort of flossing back and forth. And I remember at the time I just went all quiet because I was like, oh, I could smell something not great. I could smell something bad. I could smell something bad, right? And I turned around and on my brand new Lululemon jacket, there was a skid mark, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Whoa, whoa. There was his Lululemon was a poo-poo lemon jacket. Yeah, that's that right yeah. Good call there, Ben. So that lemon. was a skip that they did. They went down to Maslin's. Everyone was nude. Can I guarantee everybody, you and I will not be nude <laughs> on a beach <laughs> ever? I oh. never want to get skid marked on. No, <laughs> producer Flat, why are you disappointed? Oh. Come on. No. Maslin's a gorgeous. Look. We went down to Maslin's beach the other day and got some family photos. Quite seriously, we did at dusk. And because it's such a gorgeous beach, and we did it right in the guts of winter, so there were no naked people around. You got to be very careful of what time of the year that you go down. There. I don't, uh, it was Cara's idea, by the way. I don't want to drill down. Idea. I don't want to drill down too far. But you chose Maslin Beach for it's, your family it's photos. It's actually a gorgeous setting with a gorgeous setting with the cliffs and everything in the background. You, you, you live near Henley. Like, sure, what the was, hell? There was willies everywhere, but you crop <laughs> you crop them out, Jobs. <laughs> what they can do now, what AI can do now, cropping out willies and such. It's sure. really quite remarkable. I just, I just would elect for a beach where you don't have to crop out genitalia. Ah, uh, well, saying. they're everywhere. They're okay. everywhere. Watch <laughs> out. They hit you. Bang! Right in the face. Uh, finally, someone won $10,000 last yes, night. Yes, indeed. Courtney from Paralawi. Yep. Go off. The winner of $10,000. Congratulations to Gosh, a little bit overwhelmed she was. Yeah. Courtney was, whoa. <sighs> that was good. Thank you Deep to everybody who came out uh, last night to the district to celebrate Nova's 20th birthday. It was such a great chance to catch up with so many beautiful listeners. Yep.